We are not imagining it, and it's happening all across the country. America's crime crisis, devastating crime wave right now that's gripping Chicago uh, and leading to countless tragic deaths there. there. Bill Maher, you know, the, the big host, echoing a question which I raised just last week. Why are the media not speaking out about the growing violence? Watch. Why isn't anyone ever talking to, the, like, Chicago? Like, most of the the shootings are young black men killing other young black men. Is that not correct? Yeah, that's correct. Okay. Much more than, than what the cops do. Why doesn't anybody talk about that? Well, I mean, uh, why aren't there, uh, you know, a, a, a hundred giant black celebrities who would have the respect of those people saying, what are you doing to yourselves? Why are you killing each other? This I mean, is I no just... way to live. This dishonors our community. Come on. Uh, we're better than this. Right. I feel like it's never addressed. There's a narrative, and that doesn't fit it. That, yeah. that it, black on black crime, and I say it all the time on this program, anywhere, really, I speak about it, because if black lives matter, if all lives matter, then you would see BLM, the organization, not just scooping up money through its coffers and raising money, but not organizing anything, of course. You would see those reflexive blacks in the community coming out and saying, oh, you know, you got to get up in their faces and you got to do this and you got to do that, but not going to Chicago. I mean, Obama's willing to build that monstrosity of a presidential library and regentrify the place and displace all the black grandmas, but he's not going to go to his hometown that's basically on fire right now? <laughs> because it's not just about black on black crime. And frankly, it's crime coming out of predominantly, predominantly black neighborhoods in Chicago that is spreading around the city. It's beating a woman to the ground mm. during the feral teen takeover in downtown, a white woman. It's gone beyond that. And, and I want to go to something, because we've really got to look at these things bigger picture. Brandon Johnson in 2013 spoke at the Socialism Conference. He talked about getting teachers to wear the red T-shirt on Friday, then getting the young people to wear the red T-shirt. I would encourage anyone to do as I did, go and look at his speech at the Socialism Conference. In 2013, he said this. Ten years later, they found a path for the CTU to I'm put their socialists at the top. And what they did was they used anybody by any means necessary Black people that are committing these crimes ruin their lives. So let's talk about what happens to those who are, in a sense, incentivized to commit crime. Their lives are over. They will not get a job. They will not get a future. You get companies like Citadel leaving Chicago. Ken Griffin buys a Florida mansion, brings a thousand jobs that are good paying jobs out. Now you get an economic yeah. desert building. So you're seeing the end of Chicago, and just like Detroit, it lost 25% of its population, Chicago is dying, and this is the death knell of Chicago. Blacks, everyone will suffer, and there's really no future being presented. So what I love about David Cayley is that he literally will go back and look for receipts. So we're going to mm -hmm. check out that 2013 speech because that's the new mayor-elect. That's who replaced what we arguably could say was one of the most far-left mm -hmm. mayors on crime that we had ever seen, Lori Lightfoot. And now Brandon Johnson. Brandon Johnson, who is worse than Lori Lightfoot, who is trying to engage in a little revisionist history. I almost fell out of my chair when I read Lori Lightfoot. Remember, she's the first mayor not reelected in 40 years in Chicago. She said, but I know that there are people in my city that are wreaking havoc every day and they need to be off the streets. OK, where were you for four years? You were mayor <laughs> for four years and only 12 percent of crimes Great had an arrest question. attached to the end, the lowest level of arrest we'd seen since they started taking statistics. You're not a commentator. You're not a bystander, Lori Lightfoot. You caused this problem. Emily. Yeah, well, it's not a full pivot, though, Kaylee, because don't forget, after that feral uh, mob, as you call them, as the kids wreaked havoc and mayhem all over Chicago. She Three said, people got shot, by yep. the way. And she yeah. said, oh, no, there was just a few with, with poor intentions, and they will be dealt with. She said, I refuse to use your language, which I think is wrong to say there's mayhem. She still, Johnson still, they still will not call it for what it is, the black-on-black -black crime, the horrible rates. Recently, they said it's been called the new low for Chicago when two teenage boys stole a, a car, smashed into a truck with a family driving, and they killed a little baby. They were mm. only charged with misdemeanors yeah. of stealing the cars. 
But theft, meanwhile, against the backdrop, has risen 25%. Overall crimes up 47%. After that mob, think about the charges. They were all mostly misdemeanors. I don't have time to go through all of them. I have them written can, here. Can I just follow up with one thing? Because you put yeah. this better than anybody I know. I was trying to explain to somebody how the numbers have been fudged with in these Democrat-led cities and why, well, it looks like crime's going down. Mm -hmm. Can you talk just quickly about the declass and reclassification right. of crimes? Because these liberal activist district attorneys have reclassified the crimes um, designations. So they reclassify from violent to non-violent, and they reclassify from felony to misdemeanor. So they can go ahead and say, oh, felonies have gone down. Oh, but this wasn't a violent crime. It's because they changed the definition, mm -hmm. like this administration loves to do. Well, the the See, I, I think it, it honestly, in my opinion, comes down to that pushing this social justice narrative sells more Nikes than telling the truth. People don't want to tell the truth in today's society, and that's why we have so many problems. But even more than that, what would actually do more to solve crime in America would be encouraging dads to stick around, would be encouraging women to seek out partners in life and men in life that would be good fathers who want to stick around. Mm -hmm. That would do way more for this country than anything else. You are yes, my fair partner for a reason. Thank yes. you, Harris. Appreciate Amen. it, Lisa. Thank you. Hey everyone, I'm Emily Campagno. Catch me and my co-hosts Harris Faulkner and Kaylee McEnany on Outnumbered every weekday at 12 p.m. Eastern or set your DVR. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page for daily highlights.